Oh, hey, welcome to Hackster Cafe. My guest today is Anthony Paglino. He is the founder of RainCube, a device that is bringing water control and potable water to areas that previously didn't have it. So do you want to tell me a bit more about what RainCube is? Because I'm not really doing a very good job. Yeah, so the idea is to democratize water through digitization. Awesome. And I guess why is that important is because something so necessary for life is basically in the control of someone else. So if you're living in a city, you're relying on the municipality to provide you clean, reliable water. And as we've seen in Flint, Michigan, sometimes those systems fail, um, mostly due to human error. Uh -huh. so the idea is to break up that centralization into a decentralized system. So instead of having one service, you can have multiple services and uh, right now, we're just developing the prototype to say that by using the Internet of Things and low cost computing, we can make it affordable and scalable for individuals to not only collect their own rainwater, but then to count it and ultimately control it through a web app, mobile app, um, with the big vision being that if everybody is collecting rainwater, then you can develop a digital farmville, so to speak. Um, on ah. that. So the, the whole idea is developing a, a localized water and food economy, but to do that, that first time, oh. start small. Cool. And that digitization that you talked about, there's obviously there's a physical component that you build, but there's also this subscription service. How does that work? So uh, right behind me is the first prototype and that uh, up top right here, that's a, a range finder. So that's um, telling us how much water we have in the cubes at any time. And then wow. the box, that's a water tight control box, which has a Raspberry Pi. Um, so oh, cool. Just, yeah, and this is like super ghetto, um, but it was just there to kind of proof of concept. And we built this at the local hacker space. Uh -huh. um, so as you can see, I'm using a OnePlus phone charger <laughs> to to power the Raspberry Pi. Um, uh -huh. So it's getting information from the sensor and then we have a script that's running. Um, so we're, we're linked into Weather Underground. So we have an API that's basically checking the weather to see if it's raining or not. Awesome. And we have it set up on a um, predetermined watering schedule. So this will turn on and off uh, three times a day. And then that connects to um, a backyard garden uh, with a drip irrigation system. So we planted this at the end of spring in April and I left oh. Guatemala for the summer and this thing was just on autopilot and uh, egg, eggplant, peppers, okra, more eggplant. Uh, and then this banana tree has sprouted into two banana trees. And, um, and then you can see over here, all these eggplants just straight up chilling. <laughs> This kind of proved the idea that you can use it for the garden, um, but I wanted to take it one step further because water, as you know, has multiple applications. So that that was the reason be, behind going to Guatemala. Yeah, tell us about that. So you're in Florida right now, correct? Yeah. So I'm originally from I'm originally from Tampa, Florida. I'm currently in St. Pete right now, um, which is actually an even better place to to get this thing kicked off because they pump their water, they pipe in, pipe in their water across the Tampa Bay from Tampa. But huh. uh, how Guatemala got started was it was a kind of a chance occurrence in New York last year when I was working a booth at the World's Maker Fair. And I mean, I must have talked to like a thousand people over the weekend, but it was this interaction with these two guys that kind of um, had me excited. It was, a, it was a Guatemalan guy and an American guy, and the American was living in Guatemala City and they they both were working to organize the open source hardware community. So oh. people like um, linked up with Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and you know, just doing random experiments. So, you know, thinking about where is water a a really severe issue, Latin America comes to mind. Um, and Guatemala is kind of rebounding from a very long civil war. So it's kind of like turning a corner. Um, and it's trying to kind of improve and modernize and, and come in, you know, as a as a more uh, modernized uh, society. And if you compare it to like Honduras or El Salvador, Nicaragua, it has um, a lower crime rate. Not to say that it's it's I mean, I didn't have any issues there. I was there for two and a half months. And the only thing that happened 
because I, I ran over a pothole and crashed my bike. But um, sorry to hear. So the idea was to go down there and, and really um, try and understand how to adapt rain cube because I don't want this to just be for like white people in suburban Florida. Uh, the idea is to create an open open platform where people can adapt the rain cube to their their physical environment, cultural environment. So I really didn't uh, know anything about Guatemala aside from like, you know, looking at the Mayan history um, and knowing basically two people. Uh -huh. So I ended up uh, doing this volunteer farm stay for like two weeks out in like the sticks. And it was just crazy because it was, uh, you know, I was you living in a... Goat. Yeah, yeah, I was living in this courtyard with this family and um, they had like a small plot of land down the street. So I was like helping them like plant peanuts and I just it, it was it was really sweaty um, and also very basic because you had it was basically open air um, and one hour of Wi-Fi a day. And um, so anyways, I was peeling peanuts one afternoon and like uh, the mom and the grandma and the son were all like busy doing like sharpening knives. And uh, all of a sudden I see like this goat brought in because they have like a family of goats that live outside the compound. And they're like, oh, yeah. And they're speaking to me in Spanish. So I wasn't quite sure I understood them, but they basically said it had a third nipple. And that's why they were going to kill it. Huh. Uh, where I kind of knew what was going on. I was holding the goat down and they like sliced the throat and you can just yeah, like just wow. feel the blood leaving it. Um, and they like pulled out a tarp and it was just insane because you have like all this blood leaving and then like the dog comes up and like starts like it ate all the blood. The dog wow. ate all the blood. Um, so anyways, after the goat has, has been killed, then you got to like skin it. So they take this goat and they like they put it in in, in the sink. Um, and over there, the sink is called a pila. But it's um, it's like a basin uh -huh. with a, a faucet on top. So you open up the faucet and then you fill up this basin and it's like 20, 30 liters. And what they do is they'll scoop water out when they need it. And they'll have like, they have two trays on the side, one for washing dishes yeah. and one for washing clothes. So that's when I got this idea. Okay, we'll attach the pila to the rain cube because that's how everybody uses water. That's the main point of contact yeah. for use. So if I hadn't have done that ridiculous farm stay out in the middle of nowhere, I wouldn't have had that idea. And it's, I mean, it's quite obvious that that's, what to do instead of you know nobody's nobody has enough money to buy irrigation for their farms um if it's just like a small plot so i eventually made my way down to guatemala city i was like taking my time um because i wanted to really understand a little bit more of the situation before i started going in and and, and making claims so yeah. by the time i got down to guatemala city i linked up with a guy from the maker fair and um, basically he was doing an open source hardware meetup so I presented RainCube to a room of maybe 30 people. And after the presentation, a guy walks up to me. He's like, hey, um, so I design uh, circuit boards and I can I can help you. So I basically got like a top notch electrical engineer to design a brand new uh, computer, awesome. which was awesome. nice because we were using Raspberry Pi before just for like proof of concept. But now we're able to make a better product because we switched from a microprocessor to a microcontroller mm -hmm. because all we need to do is just like some sensor readings and some valves. Mm -hmm. So it's like um, in, a, in a pump. So what chip are you using uh, for that? I'm sorry, what? What chip are you using for that? Uh, I think we're using like Atmel, um, but uh, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it's actually funny because the guy, um, so it's, it, this story is crazy because I, I like, I felt like I met the one guy that I needed to meet. Uh -huh. And in fact, uh, he works at a company that has the only CNC machine in the country that could like make that computer board. Damn. It was super, super lucky. Um, so anyways, we have a, a, a scalable design um, that is uh, much more compact and also much more cost effective than, you know, a $35 Raspberry Pi. And um, also, too, we went from using a, like, a we were using Tinker Mode. This this one's still running on, on Tinker Mode. Tinker um, Mode. Yeah, Tinker Mode, um, they're, like, San Francisco-based, uh, like, IoT. Like, if you want to set up your, like, home IoT system, uh -huh. it's basically Tinker Mode. Huh. But, you know, when when you're thinking of, okay, how do we get to 1,000, 10,000, whatever users, like, it's not going to scale. So yeah. um, through the electrical engineer, we also met a uh, full stack developer who nice. has experience working um, with AWS. So we got um, uh, a professionally done um, computer board, and now we're, we're on AWS. So it's like, okay, I feel now is the time. Now back here in Florida, my next goal is to scale up yeah. and to start build out that network effect, which is – 
you know, if you have a couple people on the block and they're all doing rainwater farming, then, you know, they, they'll be able to produce more than they need. And then you get, um, uh, excess product that can be sold potentially for a profit. Yeah. So are you planning on working with a big company to scale this like a, like an Ingdon or a dragon innovation or something like that? Or are you planning on doing the crowd crowdfunding route or what? Yeah, I mean, those are all options. Um, right now, I am applying to an accelerator in Tampa. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, it's um, one, getting uh, a little bit more of a, of a polished um, like value proposition together. Because you, when you can do everything, you know, I can hook yeah. clean water up to a sink, I can hook it up to your shower, et cetera. It's like, where do I start? Um, yeah, people get this it's, it's definitely the gardens. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, if I can get to 10, um, then I can start thinking about 100. But there's no point in thinking about 100 if I can't get to 10. So is the family in Guatemala still using the rain cube? Yeah, yeah, they are still. Um, so, let me see if I can uh, pull up the app just to show you guys real quickly. Oh, cool. But um, yeah, it's just so funny because I had to, you know, trying to describe the system to people, like I, I got really lucky because I found a guy um, – who is a local like art producer. So not only did he hook me up with an installation site, but he also was able to shoot a documentary. Damn. So I just got the uh, the first version of the documentary back and um, it, it's it's a pretty pretty funny documentary. So and we're gonna throw that on Facebook, right? And so oh uh, boy, can we see that? I don't know. Brighten us a bit if you can. Let's see here. Let me see if I can now I think I need to, yeah, there we go. That's better. Cool. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, so let's see here. Okay. You can see that. Yeah. Dashboard. Okay, so dashboard. Okay. So the top one is the, um, the cube volume. Uh -huh. So we're currently at a hundred percent and then also the Pila volume. So that's the sink. So uh -huh. both the cube and the peel are at a hundred percent. So we are, we are full of water, nice. but then we have, we have a couple buttons. Um, so you can open and close the valve, huh. so manual watering. And then also kind of the biggest pain point that we saw was um, people will turn the faucet on and they'll fill up the pila, but it takes like 10, 15 minutes to fill up. So people uh -huh. walk away and then they'll come back like 20, 30 minutes later and it's overflowing or they just forget uh -huh. that it's on. So we have this so that you can fill it halfway, fill it hundred percent. So that solves at least one problem. So I think we've saved water there and we're probably saving these guys a couple hundred bucks a year in their water bill. Damn. So I don't know necessarily if, I mean, I, I don't know how the business is going to scale in Guatemala. Damn, that's really dark. Okay, here we go. But I mean, that, that's not the point right now. I think more, more importantly is getting awareness and getting people thinking that, wow, rainwater is, is such a huge resource that nobody's thinking about, nobody's talking about. And here in, I live in California, so for us, it's like an idle dream. Right. When it rains, it rains six inches in, in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with, even with that six inches, I mean, um, I would love to develop some more dry climate um, software because that's basically what it is. It's just we, we have a hardware that you just plug in the computer and you got a couple sensors and et cetera. But it's that software which really allows this thing to be very adaptable. Yeah, just run us a pipe from Florida and use your app to dispense it into my shower. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> uh, so, so you mentioned World Maker Fair. Are you planning to, like, where can people come check this out? Is this going to be at one of the Maker Fairs? Uh, well, uh, Facebook, uh, if you search RainCube, one word, that's probably the best way to keep up with cool. all the updates. But um, right now, I'm focusing specifically on the Tampa Bay area in terms of reaching the next level of scalability. Mm -hmm. The idea that if I can get up to say 10 homes um, that are using RainCube in a, in, a, in a locality, then I can take that model and send it to any other city to scale to 10. Sweet. So have 10 cities all running 10 cubes and we're up to 100. So, so yeah. 10 so, and hackers, you heard him, go check out uh, this RainCube setup and get your own. Yeah, and then, um, and I'm also, you know, cause I have a background um, in China and now the, you know, have a, a background, a little bit of a background in, in manufacturing and supply chain. So the what is happening currently in the manufacturing scene in Shenzhen is that um, everything is going smaller batch. It's going more agile, quicker mm -hmm. iterations, faster turnaround time so that instead of, you know, uh, producing for Walmart or Apple where you got to be doing a million units, 
it's like, okay, what if I only need to do a hundred yeah. um, or even 10? I mean, you can go and, you know, say I, I need right now. I think the minimum requirement is, is five minimum order is five, five PCBs and they'll ship it over to you. Is this for a seed studio? Uh, this is for, um, I mean, I think seed studio is really leading the way in terms of that agile manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's plenty of shops that you can go to online and just send them your PCB design. And then a week later, you'll have it oh, in yeah. your hand. We so, park and you've got dirty PCBs and all those guys. So I'm wondering, you know, if, if I can set up a, um, a localized micro factory where, I mean, I use this. This is such a joke in terms of that box, but it gets the job done. But the yeah. next step, is okay, if I have like there's some 3D printed components that I'm adapting right now. Um, so if I can get a, a local hackerspace to employ a couple people and they're able to manufacture like a lot of those customizable parts yeah. and that makes the supply chain all that much more, um, more low, like it's lower overhead. Yeah. So I think that's where the industry is going. Um, definitely. You've got local motors with a couple of micro factories in the U S you've got, you know, Kentucky and Phoenix areas. Yeah, first, uh, first build holding it down. Um, so yeah, I you know there's a, there's plenty of new business models. Even if it's just if I'm selling the 3D designs and somebody's manufacturing RainQ parts locally. Yeah. Uh, because I have a, for me the the more open it is, um, the more um, it is meant around democratization in terms of you have the tools to to solve your own problem. Hmm. Because we're moving away from that centralized. Um, I mean. How much longer can Apple and Facebook last when when they're you know controlling all the IP? Uh -huh. and we haven't even started to scratch the surface with blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Yeah, because, if you're doing value transfer with the like selling water to each other, that's correct. So um, right now, so my background is in economics. So mm -hmm. like I dream of current like uh, not really, but I, I'm <laughs> for me I see the biggest uh, the biggest um, obstacle to solving climate change is actually the money system because it us dollars whatever it is doesn't take into account all of those externalities that i mentioned before with environment and with social so if i could create a a currency that is able to capture the value of that rainwater uh let's call it rain coin um and each rain coin uh maybe represents a million drops of water which is about uh 200 gallons of water so every every vegetable has a water requirement. So a pound of tomatoes is going to need, you know, 20 gallons of water or, you know, each different vegetables have different water requirements. Um, so the idea is, is can you use that rain coin to exchange not only for goods such as food, but also for services. So if I need somebody to come in and install a rain cube or I need somebody to come and help me design a garden or um, I need somebody to come and like, you know, harvest my crops. Yeah. And then you can also think about, well, um, the, the lost opportunity cost, because eventually the cost of, of, of installing these is going to drop uh, to something like under five. This yeah. system um, right now, it's about a thousand dollars for a two cube system, give or take. Uh, but I have a feeling that cost is going to drop. And once that happens, the opportunity cost to not install is greater. So if I can install one for five hundred dollars, but the lifetime value of the system is five thousand, ten thousand, whatever it is. I may go in and, and, and subsidize that installation yeah, and then yeah. I could actually become a, a water utility so that if I hook it up to your washer and your shower, then you can be paying me in rain coin. Mm -hmm. um, and there may even be a way to code it in so that the water is always cheaper than whatever the market price is. Yeah. And you can even have like your neighbor help you set it up uh, and then you sort of like pay them back in, in rain coin in like water or whatever. And that'd be super exactly. So, I mean, for me, that's, what's exciting is the yeah. ability to create communities. So for two years, um, uh, from 2010 to 2012, I lived in Southwest rural China. I was, uh, working at a boutique hotel and outside of the hotel was this like idyllic village that was like still farming. Mm -hmm. So I was able to, um, kind of see the link between, uh, intergenerational farming where you're passing the traditions down and how they have um, built a um, an, a personal community around it. So the reason why you have Mid-Autumn Festival, the reason why you have Chinese Lunar New Year's Festival is is centered around harvest and planting. Oh, um, interesting. Okay, like how can we adapt that to like have a harvest block party uh -huh. where everyone on the street is, you know, showcasing their, their, their produce or whatever it is. Cool. So, I mean, I'm 
and and also too in Guatemala, um, linking up with the artists, we we had a, a graffiti artist, like one of the, the city's premier graffiti artists. Uh -huh. He was um, <laughs> name. Uh -huh. uh, he did this. Um, he did this really cool like jaguar in the jungle motif, um, because in in Mayan mythology, the jaguar is the animal of the underworld that is also um, mm -hmm. responsible for like protecting nature and praying for rain. Cool. So, that's fantastic. I'd yeah. like to show people your site really quick. Um, so here we have raincube.io. Uh, let me make this big. There we go. Raincube.io, and you can learn about the project here. You can see some sweet videos. Uh, if you scroll down the bottom, uh, you get a Facebook link where you can find that documentary uh, soon that Anthony was talking about. You can also check out the kit that they offer. Uh, so you can join. Yeah, that's the uh, <laughs> but if you go back, I think one of the cool things about the website currently is there is a, a rainwater calculator. So oh, you can cool. scroll down, you can open up that calculator and you basically uh, put in your zip code and your the, the square space footprint of your house. And that uh -huh. will give you an idea of how much water you could potentially collect per year. Oh, cool. So for example, this, this two bedroom house behind me, um, we get 50 inches, uh, give or take, of water a year here. So we could potentially collect up to 25,000 gallons of water a year. And 25,000 gallons of water is enough to not only meet the the water requirement for the house be it you know for showers drinking garden but you may also have excess so that you can then sell to a, a neighbor uh-huh awesome but, so everybody wins these cubes are modular so you can connect them and disconnect them very easily and all you need is a pallet jack to move them around or a, mm -hmm. or a forklift so Dang. i mean if i have excess and my neighbor needs some some water maybe there's a smart contract to automatically send some type of automated forklift over here um and then also too like um you know I, I think of farmville as a great example of um this gamification idea yeah. so you know i feel like you know right now i think everybody has this feeling of like why are we even you know why go to work you know what is the whole point of just this rat race but if you can um give some not only somebody but a group of people a goal to work towards mm -hmm. Game um, that makes things a lot more interesting. So I'm a big fan of um, oh, what's your name, Laura Bonigal. She wrote um, the future. Reality is broken. So hmm. basically lays out all these cases for how gamification can solve real world problems. So if, if we if we were able to design a game where everybody around the world plays to end global warming, which is basically we have uh, we build out enough rainwater catchment to meet the demand of the global population because you don't need to produce any more than you need uh -huh. now we're not our global food food system is is so so damaged um it makes no sense so for example in california which is a water poor region you're growing alfalfa to ship to china to feed the dairy farmers so um so anyways, I mean, there's a, a bunch of potential. Uh, I think at this point, it's about rallying people together who kind of share that vision or who can who can conceptualize it. So um, I'm open to people um, kind of jumping on the platform and seeing what they can do with it. Because Great. I, I, mean, my, I, I think of this as a success if I can grow beyond me. Because if I'm staying in the middle, there's like, it's it's not gonna work. So I'm, I'm trying to uh, get out of the way. Cool. So what's the best way for people to join the cause? Is it to go through Facebook and contact that way or? Yeah, so yeah. I have, um, so Facebook is great. I'm also starting meetups locally here in Tampa. Um, mm -hmm. I think if somebody is like technologically proficient enough, we have a GitHub in terms of, mm -hmm. so, I mean, I'm if somebody's down to build one of these things. I, you know, it's, at this point, I want to make it open source in terms of if you have the expertise to build it, I want you to join. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't want the, the technological barrier to keep people out. So I'll have it as an open source project that people can build, and I'll also have it as a, as a product or a kit that people can buy and maybe can install it for them. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking the time. Uh, I'll put this up. I'm happy to be back on Hackster. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we first met through Seed Studio, I think. Right. 
Um, and it's great to see that you're continuing awesome work doing more stuff for the earth. <laughs>